What it do, people? It's your boy, Crispy T, with an update on the first update for episode 41 of Calling of a Ravenous Bird. This had to do with the East Rand floods and the presence of excess sewage on the roads and more so on the motorways, the particularly the highways and the motorways and the surprising guests called crocodiles. So... Yes, um, this prophecy in itself is just, um, I've just felt led to talk about this because there was an activity, a quite a significant one, where the removal of the mayor of Ekuruleni or East Rand, uh, as was previously known. So just for the benefit of my English speaking and English hearing um, viewers or subscribers to just um, know exactly what I'm talking about when I speak about the municipal municipal district called the Kuruleni. It's more, um, it was the previously known as the East Rand and all, for all those who are international viewers as well, just to know that uh, the Johannesburg metropolitan area is basically segmented in a few, into a few districts. So this is the eastern part of town, um, so to speak. So if ever you, I know in the USA, they normally use the counties and the, those sort of frame of references, the municipalities, it's just a different word for it. So with this said, let me just um, get into this. And exactly what is going on. So the mayor for the East Rand, um, whose name is Tanya Campbell, who is of the who is of the Democratic Alliance, which is the main opposition here in South Africa, was ousted by the ANC in order with the and as far as maybe you can call it colluding or floor crossing. I'm not too sure exactly what the p political term of reference is over here, but in this context, they basically got um, got her voted out. And yes, so with because it was a bit of a messy and a hung municipality, meaning that people, are, well, the political parties had to enter into alliances and strategic alliances in order to take over the district. And the ANC has somehow solved the division there in the municipality. And they tried to do that in the main hub of the city of Joburg. And um, and in city of Joburg, what they did was they actually passed a whole motion of no confidence. But the courts ruled just this week, and it was deemed as a illegal. Oh, sorry, what am I saying? An illegal and an unlawful, so to speak. So, it, it, the previous mayor was also of the Democratic Alliance. Uh, Alliance is still the mayor of the city of Joburg right now, and was just reinstated by, by the courts. However, um, the stickier situation, and if you read what's happening in according to Eyewitness News, and I've linked it here in the article, and I'll also put it up here, is this, is that I would, um, the, um, the situation here in Igurleni is a little different. So the Democratic Alliance cannot enter through the courts because um, there's a certain situation that they do not want to enter in any sort of alliance with a particular party that had actually helped vote them in, which is the Economic Freedom Fighters or the EFF. So with that said, they just said, well, they'll just sit on the sidelines and see what happens. So this is why I believe that God had strategically showed me this. Uh, well, yeah, decided to show me all of this in, in, in the instance of what's actually happening in the balance of power. So what happened in the city of Joburg was he just allowed the courts to handle that one. And as far as the Guruleni is concerned, and this was, remember, when I made mention of the in the original prophecy in episode 41, was that it was the last municipality here in Gauteng, which is the province, and and it was the last one to actually flip away from the ANC meaning that it was an ANC stronghold for the longest time. So this, this situation requires God's intervention. And I believe that what we're going to see here with the floods, and let me tell you something, it's been raining, it's been flooding, and, and it's been starting. And there was actually a flood here in uh, Alberton, where I reside, in the, yeah, in the town. And it was actually quite scarily quite close to me. It was literally... In the adjacent road where there was a flood but um, that area is known for floods but here's the point that i'm going to refer back to eyewitness news is this is that when the previous mayor the one mayor from um, miss tanya campbell was actually 
um, thrown off. And in her 11-month tenure as, as the mayor of Ikuruleni or the East Rand, she serviced about 2,100 sewage systems across the district that were neglected for three years. So, and also, funny enough, um, I got an SMS from the Democratic Alliance um, at 9 o'clock on Thursday, the 27th of October, which is yesterday, right, um, In this, uh, for the benefit of this as, I, as I'm recording this. This means that that um sorry when when they actually sms this they said we were fighting corruptions and the sms basically read and i'm just paraphrasing that the democratic alliance in their words said they were fighting corruption and the anc just took them out because of that essentially and yes so it was just one of the things that they were actually um servicing the area and mainly doing their job and governing in a way that is deemed as providing the municipal service to the people as um, as it had not been previously, well, it, there was a lot of maladministration and malfeasances. So in this instance, it, it's quite, uh, quite frightening that it seems like the ANC are just doing anything they can just to hold on to power. And and I'm afraid God is not going to allow it for them. He's not. Go- his plans are not going to be put off um, by this um, whatever last siege or last kicks of a dying horse, whatever situation is is emanating and happening here in Guruleni or over here and just in jo- in Johannesburg and just in South Africa as a whole. So he's strategically poised and. What I said there, and also if you recall in the original in the prophecy in itself, is that it's not a prophecy that the flooding ever happens there. The only thing new about this is the presence of the crocodiles. The sewage, you will always say, yes, you can always say that it was always there, but um, just as a presence and something that was always going to float up. And I also made reference to the applicable scripture or what I thought might be applicable because I wasn't sure if God was being strategic or sorry, not being strategic, but was being literal or was being rather poetic in the sense, because sometimes he's just, that's just two years. He can pretty much say whatever he wants and that's for you to catch up and try and get it. So this is um, the scripture that I'm reading here, and I did put it in the prophecy as well, but I'm just reminding here and why I say I believe it's aimed at the ANC and why it's poised, because there's been a lot of rain in this district. And I reside in a Guruleni because I'm, well, I'm just at the border of it in here in Alberton, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm more southeast. It's just one of those areas. So Ezekiel 32 verse 2 reads, mortal man. He said, give a, sol- give, a sol- give a solemn warning to the king of Egypt. Give him this message from me. You act like a lion among the nations, but you're more like a crocodile splashing through a river. You muddy the water with your feet and pollute the rivers. So yes, it's a solemn warning to the king. Over here, as to, um, he said to the prophet Ezekiel, um, which had to go to the king of Egypt, was compared to a crocodile. And over here, why God, I do believe God is being poetic in the sense, is the sense that um, the presence of these crocodiles, okay, is uh, is just to say that, well, it's going to fall on the, the blame is going to fall squarely on the African National Congress here just wanting to do what they always did and just loot and hemorrhage and do whatever they think that it, it, thinking that whatever the state coffers belong to them and them alone. And no, 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 God uh, is, is going to fight this one. Um, and I strongly believe it here. As far as um, if you can see where it specifically says here in, in Ezekiel 32 verse 2, where you muddy the water with your feet and, and pollute the rivers. You muddy the water with your, fo- with your feet and pollute the rivers. Hence the sewage and the lack of service and the servicing and the maintenance of the sewage system over there. Mm -hmm. And God is just going to do his Mm -hmm. thing and the crocodiles will serve a good reminder of that. And this is why I 
and I'm going to cross reference with another scripture. And this is going to be from 2 Kings 2, verse 24, where the, it was the prophet Elisha, just after he took over from Elijah, when Elijah was taken up, there were 40, there was like a group of 40 plus, I don't know how many children, but all I know, 42 of them were attacked by she bears after they insulted the the prophet uh, Elisha and two she bears tore these children apart. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing though about this and the irony here and the disturbing thing about the animal behavior in this is that she bears are known and these two female, and these are two female bears that uh, are actually known in that district is that they get very aggressive when you attack their young, like very aggressive. And here's the irony is that, is that, God sent in the she bears to attack children who insulted an elder. So he can sort of use something to drum a point in is that, you know, it wasn't a case of a children being protected. It was a matter of, um, I'm going to protect my child who's an elder in the sense. So he can be very poetic, um, as far as animal behavior and all of this to send in a, uh, to bring home a point and just like when uh, the prophet Elijah as well and I made reference to that uh, scripture as well where he sent in the ravens to give the prophet Elijah the food and uh, and here's the funny thing about ravens and from what I know they are ravenous meaning that whatever they take they eat and they consume they're quite greedy so imagine a greedy bird carrying food for you know in the in in a very secluded area just to supply food for somebody and actually having the discipline to hold those food for good knows how long and how long they were flying for and all of this and um bringing food to the prophet so god does these things to keep us thinking to say what is this plan with this animal and what is he actually saying and i just think that um that this the presence of these crocodiles that you're going to be seeing well yeah like i i like i was saying look i hope i'm not going crazy and all of this but anyway this is um what was shown to me and i'm just um just reiterating it and why i believe that this is primed right now and we've been getting a lot of rain here in the east rand all of a sudden and um and in Joburg all of a sudden it's been particularly cold there was a a, a, a premature heat wave it's not normal you know normally you get these heat waves around december january main i'll say january february more so that's when they particularly uh, apex and they climax uh, they climax to to quite a high but we experienced it at the beginning of the spring which is particularly peculiar you know so yeah, God is really setting things about. And I, I also bring a reference to what I was um, shown in episode 18 by the Holy Spirit about the fact that the weather patterns changing, that this has got nothing to do with um, global warming or climate change as the way they um, try to sell it. This is God being very strategic as in what he's trying to do as far as the cleansing works are concerned. You know, so... Yeah, he's flipping the script and there are particular weird things that he's been showing me that just that's to show just to show you that there's no way it can be just a a scientific configuration that you know in great detail that hang on, someone is controlling this and you know it's from him. So yes, people, um pray for the East Rand, pray for everybody just to stay protected and ensure that um you guys stay safe. Um, you know, of course I don't want to, um, sell panic or anything because at the end of the day, um, I did make reference to the fact that yes, angelic protection does come to, um, in, you know, in, just come into the fore over here and will come into play and all of this as to how it's, everything is coordinated. So, but, um, just, uh, yeah, just be on the lookout and just pay attention and just pray, stay prayed up and. Yes, get to know the Lord Jesus Christ and everything else will go right, you know. But peace and much love and I'll take you next time. Thanks for listening to this update. Bye-bye.